Hey, what's up? This is your girl, Taylor Wilde. Welcome back to Wild On Season 5, the podcast where you get the insider's view of the weird, wild world of wrestling and witchcraft. On Wednesdays, today's guest is a Dominicana New Yorker. She is a professional wrestler, tag team specialist, actress, and presenter. She has the fierceness of a Leo and the sharpness of a Gemini. Not a combination I would cross. You have seen her on Impact Wrestling, NWA, and all over the independents. One half of the successful tag team, The Hex. Ladies and gentlemen, my girl, Marty Bell. Crazy that I, we we never met before. That's that's kind of I think we just we kept missing each other. We like did. every time when I when I was at Impact, you were taking a break because you were off doing amazing magical things, oh. <laughs> and then you came back, and then I was gone, and then yep. now I'm really glad that we got a chance to connect there. Me too. But like tapings are so crazy. I, I try to explain this to people. It's like it is literally wait around and then go 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 yes. so you don't generally get a lot of time to socialize with people like i don't i don't even think we got more than five words in you feel like you have so much time and yeah. you do and you're kind of like all right well i'm dressed now and i did my makeup and i'm, I'm hanging out and then all of a sudden you're like oh my gosh my match is on next like what like yeah i haven't even warmed up i feel like i never oh. ever warm up because i'm always like oh my, i have so much time like i'm like I've got hours and hours and hours, and then literally, you're at the curtain like doing arm circles. <laughs> yeah, it's, I feel like I, like I've yeah. been doing this since I was 17 years old, and I should know better. It never changes. No. I am never prepared when I hit gorilla. No. Like I shouldn't say that, but this is like I wish people knew, and maybe this is like some insight <laughs> to our listeners is. It is not leisurely backstage. The higher you go in your career, the more you're being pulled in like 4,000 yeah. different directions backstage and you hit the, like you hit the stage like, uh. What's happening? What's, yeah, uh, yeah. No, I, I, I'm glad, I'm glad to know that it's like, it, it still happens. It still happens because sometimes I'm like, <sighs> Am I just not prepared? Like, no. am I just underprepared? Like, what is happening? But I'm I'm glad to know that this is <laughs> across the board something we all continue to deal with. I just think you manage the chaos yes. better. And this is another thing, and I, it kind of runs parallel to my firefighting career. I don't know many people in the field of professional wrestling or firefighting that don't suffer from some undiagnosed version of like ADHD and like because you wouldn't be able to do it. You simply I wear this ring. So oh, cuz it oh it's, it's yeah. You won't be able to see it, but I was going to buy those cuz I'm a a finger digger. Like I don't dig, but oh. I like if I would if I didn't have this on, I'd probably be like just yep. holding on to this or like picking something up, just having it in my hands. So just, just to calm down, just to keep me, here. keep me, yes, just to keep me engaged and in the moment. <laughs> and I feel like I've actually started wearing it to shows too because I do feel like oh. there is you're 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 so overstimulated, especially on show day, especially more, even more on a pay per view day. Yeah. Oh my gosh. The Hex was just at No Surrender in Vegas, yep. which was an incredible experience. Super happy to have been there, but we didn't we kind of forgot that we were on the west coast me and ak are both from the east coast like we're both on eastern standard time so you know we're ready like all right seven o'clock like you know doors are opening at six like yep. all right main show starts at eight <laughs> and then it's like four o'clock and we're like all right come on guys like you guys are on second and we're like wait what like yeah yeah there's definitely so much going on all the time so it definitely oh, is uh all the time. you do definitely need to find some time to like center yourself and like have some me time and like yeah and as someone who i can't say that i'm neurodivergent but i'm certainly not typical <laughs> or i wouldn't be able to do what all the things that i do but that's a big part of of like the aftermath of tapings is the sensory overload and it's always made me this introverted extrovert because as soon as the time is like our day is done everyone's like let's go out let's party i'm like i'm physically incapable Drake. yeah I are will you say like that though, too well y yes and no it depends okay. like ak and i um sometimes we will just go back to our rooms and just like chill and just yeah 
watch ridiculousness that's like our thing is we go, <laughs> love we go back show. to our room we just it's always on it's always <laughs> on so it is like you know if there's a tv in the hotel room you can watch ridiculousness oh so we gosh. just go back and we watch tv but like this last time we knew that our time was kind of limited and yeah. we were having so much fun we were having such a nice time seeing everybody that we're like you know what let's go and have let's go out and have a drink let's go out and have dinner because we don't know when when we're going to get that experience again. True. And that's something that we do try to keep in mind. Um, you know, it was a very long time since either of us had been at Impact. So it was great to come back. And it was great to come back to such a great locker room. Because right. I think that's something... Um, the knockouts have always been known as having an amazing, amazing locker room. And this one is no different. Like, it was yeah. just... We felt at like we felt right at home, you know, with everybody there. And we had such a good time. And so when it's moments like that, you're like... We had to go out, like, and so we ended up going out. Um, we ended up bowling, and not for nice. nothing, but the girls definitely slaughtered the men. Like it was international even, Women's Day, you know, it's international fine. Women's Day, whatever. Just you know, out here representing. Yes. Good so for it you. was. It was really nice. It was really fun, and yeah. But then once I get home, I'm like, it's at least like two or three days where um, I don't think yeah. I. I think I went to the gym like maybe twice last week. I was very much like, I'm going to take like a week <laughs> to just like give myself some time. And then of course, like my allergies have been, I'm, I'm sure you, I'm sure you can hear this is not my normal, uh, seductive voice. You still sound great. Yeah. I still sound amazing. I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking about now that I have this headset, I'm thinking about like, I don't know, answering phone calls somewhere or something. Or like have a real Britney moment. Just <laughs> You know, awesome. I'm a horrible singer, but. If I Same. could lip sync, that would be amazing. I, I'll definitely we, do it. Can we talk about Britney? Let's can we? Britney. Yes, let's talk about oh Britney. Oh my god, Britney. Are you watching her Instagram? <sighs> I don't because... So I don't follow her. A lot of her stuff no. comes up on my Explore page. Mm-hmm. I don't follow her because I feel like it's... We're all waiting to see what she's going to do next type of thing, you know? And it almost feels like... I don't know. It feels weird of being like there's this person that you loved as a kid. And like, you know, she's incredible. She's amazing. And then... It, we don't know what's going on with her. We don't no. know what's going on at home. We don't know what's going on in her head. And and so it's it makes me sad. And so I don't follow her. But I see stuff pop up all the time. And <sighs> I just, like, I I love Britney. Like, I was always yeah. Team Britney over Team Christina. I love Christina, yeah. too. Yes. Don't, no shade. A bomb singer, but yes. hundred percent. But there I was, was always Team Britney. There was something about Britney. Yeah. And yeah. I just, you know, there's nothing I can do. There's nothing you can do. But I feel like I, I got to watch. But I also, like, I'm like, you go, girl. You live your truth. But also, like, yeah. why is no one okay? helping her? Yeah. Yes. Like, but yes, if watch- you want to dance and you want to do your thing, like, we Get your boobies that. on the internet. Go ahead. But also, yeah. like... Are Do you, okay? you need help? Like yes. wink, like blink twice. Like well, people, isn't that a thing that people would do? That they would they would comment like wear yellow if you need help. Like this, yes. she would wear yellow the next video. Yeah. So like it is, it is, it's scary. It's scary. You really don't it's know scary. what's going on in her head and what's going on around her, and you just hope that she's like safe and taken care of. Yeah, I don't know if you watch like the last year of Amy Winehouse's life. Like they were still pushing her on stage, yeah. and like you literally watched a human yeah. like die like a, a like mental illness and addiction yeah. which to me is all the same like it's it's terrifying it's it's really sad and i do hope that i hope she has some good people around her which is very important we yeah, talk about that all the yeah. time like having a good support system and checking in on your friends but also understanding there's only so much that we can do because there are times yes. that we do check in on our friends and we do all the things that we're told we're supposed to do and it's still not enough and yeah. so like i know that you know that's something also to remember like we can only do as much as we can do as much as they allow us to do basically and checking in is like the biggest thing you can do yes because if they believe that they have support like you can't no one can change unless they want to help themselves yeah that's truly it but if they know they have people there then everyone has free will and everyone has choice but that's and i think too sometimes it's not just reaching out and be like hey are you okay because I remember, yeah. like, I've I've texted friends that, and they'll literally respond back, am I okay? Like, kind of, like, as a joke. Because yeah. it's like, how do you respond to that if you're not okay, if you're going through stuff, or if yeah. you're not, you know? So sometimes, like, just sending a text of being like, I'm thinking about you, I'm here if you need me. I yes. love memes. Like, memes is part of my love language. Send me a meme. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, I... 
I love a meme. Yes, I love a good meme. I love I love yeah. I love to laugh. That's crazy, right? But I know. That's I think that's a way to sometimes check in on your friends too. Cause sometimes asking like, are you okay does put a lot of pressure on people because Yeah. Like if they're not okay, like I don't want to worry you. I'm not gonna tell you I'm, not, I'm no, I'm not okay. And then, you know, so sometimes just literally texting somebody and being like, Hey, I'm thinking about you. I'm here if you yeah. need me. I'm thinking yeah. about you. Do you want to get a drink this week? Do you uh, want to watch a movie together? Like there's different things that we can do. That's not necessarily just being like, how are you? Yeah. Cause, Cause you're, you're probably not going to get the truth if yeah. someone's not right. And yeah. you said it just like, Hey, thinking of you, love, love you. you. Want to get a drink. Yeah. And you know what? You got to leave the ball in their car- yeah. court too when they're ready. Yeah. How did we get so heavy? So I don't know. Quick? This is, yeah. This what did you talk about, Brittany? <laughs> this got deep really fast. Fuck. Okay, let's switch. Hard switch. Switching Hard again. Switch. <laughs> okay, I want to talk about the hex yes. for obvious reasons because we love the hex. How did this witchcraft badassery <sighs> become the hex into fruition you know it's so funny we talk about it all the time like a lot of people think that we are witches and that is no it's so, i know that's not but it's case. so funny because a lot of <laughs> especially because of our name i think a lot of people think yes. that and long long story short allison and i have been friends i think since 2010 maybe okay yeah so we've been friends for a very very long time um actually havoc introduced us <laughs> <gasps> which didn't work out this. too well for her but <laughs> But I friends. digress. <laughs> Jessica Havoc introduced us a long, long time ago, uh, back in WSU days. So back in okay. like New York, New Jersey days, and yep. literally told me like, "I'm bringing my friend AK. You're gonna love her." Told AK the same thing, and we're kind of like, "All right, cool, yeah, I'm sure I will." Yeah, and yeah. And it was it was kind of like instant that we clicked and became friends, and then we really cemented our friendship on a long, long road trip, as a lot of times you do, because you spend so yeah. much time in the car. And we just clicked. And during the pandemic, so both of us have been working for NWA. We're actually, um, we kind of didn't get along at our NWA times. And so, oh. yeah, there were some, there were some, okay. some issues. Uh, but we, okay. we sorted through them. We sorted through them. We realized, you know, the pandemic is kind of bigger than all of us. It was kind of bigger than yeah. everything, you know, going on, any petty little thing going on. And yep. so we were just talking one day and we kind of were trying to figure out, like, what is wrestling going to look like when it does come back when is wrestling you know what is missing and that's something that allison has always asked herself like what is missing and how can i fill that void and we realized there weren't a lot of women tag teams uh, on the indies on the indies like japan has always had them you know wwe has has had them impact uh, obviously has the knockouts there just wasn't enough on the indies and we're like well huh let's see if we become a tag team we can hang out all the time and have fun together and just like do our own thing, do whatever we want. And so yeah. we kind of just like decided like, screw it, let's just see what happens. And so we had a photo shoot yeah. together and we put the photo shoot out and we were like, hey, if we were a team, what would you name us? And we kind of just like started kind of getting feelers out there. And then actually Dave Prezak of Shimmer was the first person to actually book us as a team. And that was October, oh, wow. 2020. And so we always joke about this, that, I believe our first four matches that we had as a team were all tag team, like championship matches. No way. <laughs> so we challenged for the Shimmer titles, then we sh- challenged for the Shine titles, and then NWA called us about coming in to challenge for the new titles that you know were, were being res- resurrected. And so mm-hmm. our third match, our fourth match, we win the titles. <laughs> fourth time is a charm actually technically third because it was a third title a third time's a charm and so we kind of have just been running with it you know we've gotten to travel to europe um we've gotten to do some stuff here in the u.s a lot of really really awesome stuff in the u.s where we're we have an eye on canada we're coming for canada oh we, we're coming i've never wrestled good. in canada so we are really? yes ever i've only been to canada once oh you gotta come which is also okay yeah i've only been to toronto one time for a blue jays game uh, oh yeah no well i wasn't there for the blue jays i was there for the other team the Blue Jays were playing but i was there i was there for, the, for cleveland okay i know there is a certain magic to our team and i think yeah. that yeah, yeah. There, there really is and it does it really does feel that way one thing that we're really proud of is that like we accomplished so much last year i have all these memories popping up from like everything that we accomplished last year and it's really incredible yeah. for us because everything that we did we did on our own we did it without a contract. Yeah. We did it without, you know, anybody really backing us. Just kind of us just betting on ourselves and being like, 
we want to do all these things so how are we going to do it and then reaching out to companies mm-hmm. reaching out to promoters and so we got to wrestle in uh we got to wrestle for wrestling eve we got to wrestle for ref pro in the uk and then we went over to spain and got to do a uh a seminar with lucha Libre barcelona and so it was just oh, wow it was such an incredible trip. We were going to go to, to Portugal and some shenanigans happened at the airport. We weren't able to make it. But Aww. that was like, oh, I was so excited about going to Portugal. But <laughs> I've been practicing. I've been practicing my Portuguese. So I was really, really excited. Oh, I was so excited. Ready. I was so ready. ready. But it just wasn't meant to be the time. And we know that yep. next time we go back to Europe, we know that's at the top of our bucket list. And I said long story <laughs> short and I've been talking for like five minutes. Girl, this is a podcast. You talk. Oh, I'm really good at There's that. No. So. That's good, good. Okay, so Dave Prezak, he was the yeah. first to book you guys. Then all the momentum you guys have had over the past, well, since 2020, yeah. has all been homegrown. It's all been organic, which is amazing because yeah. we are in this interesting phase of pro wrestling where, like, if you do your social media, you do your own photo shoots, you yep. do your TikToks, like, Dan Housen, I keep, I always go back to Dan Housen. I've never met He's him. Incredible. I've never watched He's a great. full match. Yeah. But I fucking bought a t-shirt because yeah. <laughs> his social media presence yeah. is genius. He's committed to his character. And as someone who loves a cult, <laughs> loves heavy music, like his Bauhaus inspired t-shirts, I was like, well, I'm going to fucking Yeah, no, buy he's, that. Gr- he's great. And he's, he, he is, he's very smart. And I oh, think that's so something smart. that we have tried to use social media as much as we can. That is how we've made a lot of our connections with like other promotions Mm -hmm. and things like that. And so many times I remember when we were getting ready for Empower, Mickey setting up an interview for us and being like, "Uh, do you guys need two links or one? And we're like, well, two, we live in separate places. She's like, you guys don't live together. So many people think (laughs) we live together. Or they'll ask me like, how long have you lived in Detroit? And I was like, I have literally never lived in Detroit. That is AK. (laughs) All day, every day, Detroit for life. Like that is her. But I think because we're always together, and if we're not together, yeah, we've done a million photo shoots. We take vacations together. Yeah. We li- now we live within driving distance from each other. So we're four hours away, which is literally driving distance. I'm driving to her house next week. We literally <laughs> just we get together as much as we can, and we do. We, we get a lot of stuff oh. together, and we're always yeah. trying to release stuff just to keep people like like right now. We really haven't had that many matches this year. We have a lot of signings coming up and things like that. But we're we, so you need to find a way to stay fresh in people's minds and yeah and that's definitely something that i think a lot of people a lot i think a lot of the kids that are coming up now or like the younger generation they kind of get that because they've grown up with the tiktoks and the instagrams and all that and so you just it sucks because there's times when i just like want to put my phone down and not look at it for like a week and sometimes i do sometimes i get off social media for a few days like this last the last few months have been really rough and have been like like just big yeah. highs and lows and so there literally will be I'm just sorry. days where i'm just like i'm just not i'm just not dealing with social media yeah. for a few days and so you also need to like be able to separate that and give yourself that time when you do need it away but also know like dude everything moves so fast something can go viral like and all of a sudden like i know there was um a guy named alex zane who went viral for some crazy like flip he did i don't, I don't even know it was like it was yeah. like it was some Trey Miguel type thing. Like, you know, so, <laughs> something that I can't even tell you how many rotations it was. But it, like, yeah. blew up so much that, like, a few months down the line. And obviously, he'd been putting in the work. And there have been other things that he had done. But he got signed. Like, WWE picked him up, like, so quickly because he got so much attention from this one thing he did. And it's just crazy, it's crazy. like, what can go viral and just... Yep. Yeah, it's just you you really do have to like keep up with the times and it's a lot. You you got to put in the old school work yeah. that you do, but also social media is just oh, yeah. as important if not more important no, these they, days and yeah. it's but you do have to have balance because it can be all consuming. Like it is a full-time job yes. and that's what I'm learning because I'm trying to there's so many things I want to do and I'm not getting any younger. But you like <laughs> your stuff but. is like you have I see your stuff all the time. Like you pop up my feed all the time, which is good because it's not a, I, I, there's so many people that I follow that don't pop up on my feed. So for you to pop up like all the time, I'm like, all right, that means like your stuff is like getting engagement. It's like, but like, I feel yeah. like, and you know, maybe I, I don't know you as well. So maybe, maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like you really have come into yourself in the last like year. I don't even know, like just the last, just like you're, you're all, you're consistently, the stuff you're consistently putting out. I can tell it's very you. 
And I think that's awesome. Thank you. I think that's very, very, that's, that's awesome. Like that's, hell yeah. That's a huge compliment. I really, really appreciate that. And it's just, you know, like uh, in the first half of my career, it was a very different yeah. time. It was out of the attitude era and, you know, it was the pretty blonde girl versus the pretty brunette yeah. girl and there wasn't a lot of room for characters like you had awesome kong and you had like, i'm trying to think, raisha. raisha saeed like i'm just thinking yeah. about the knockouts but like there wasn't a huge amount of diversity and you know you're told your whole career find your character yeah. find yourself well i couldn't really and i was so young and it took me like a lot of hard life yeah. things to really break and be like you know what fuck it I am just going to be my fucking self. Like, I'm not getting any younger. I'm a mom. I'm a firefighter. A few divorces under my belt. And like, you know what? I don't give a shit no more. I love that. I love that. <laughs> like, I absolutely love that. I think it's so funny because you hear that all the time. Like, people that have been in the in the, in the business for a long time, that they'll say, like, yeah. you know, I didn't hit my stride until I was, like, seven years in. And I hit my stride until I was ten years in. And I feel that. I feel like the last oh, few years. for sure. Like, I feel I'm very happy that. We got to come back to Impact and show a little bit of, of like, our evolution. Uh, obviously, would love yeah. to come back and continue showing how, like, how much we've changed because Impact was the first place that ever gave me, like, television. I had never really worked mm. for TV until I worked at Impact. It was my first contract. I think I was five years in. And even then, wow. like, I mean, five years seems like a lot, but it's really not. Like you're still you're still discovering yourself, and I feel like I was very timid my first time around because I I didn't want to mess up, I didn't want to like speak up too much or say like, well, how about this idea? Uh, when the dollhouse yeah. happened, like I was super thankful, like I had a character, and that was so exciting. Like yes, I feel like people are gonna think I'm a I'm a I'm a stalker, but whatever. Everybody knows. <laughs> everybody knows how much I love Mickey James. So like getting to play sure. like a like a crazy or like deranged character was so awesome yep. for me because I was like, this is like, this is like my little Mickey James moment, you know, like, this totally. is, and so it was super exciting, it was super awesome to get to do that, and then when we disbanded and I came back kind of just as myself, I felt like I had a little bit more of creative freedom there because yep. I was being myself, and we're back, and you know, uh, yes, we wanted to come back together. We had talked about this so many mm -hmm. times, like if we came back, we wanted to do it together, we wanted to do it as a team, and we wanted to to kind of do things our way. And I'm very, very thankful that that's exactly how things played out. You know, put it out to the universe and the universe listens. Yeah, We are very, very firm believers in that. Like, I like there's like certain things that I live by. Like, everything happens for a reason, but you have to make it happen. Like, mm. you have to. And I hate, like, you got to put in the work. But, like, that's... If you something do. is going to happen, you have to work for it. Like, I'm not like I'm not going to close my door and sit inside and be like, all right, cool. Like, I'm going to get signed or something's going to happen. I'm going to get a bunch of opportunities <laughs> if I don't at least put my face out there. If I don't at least start hitting people up or start talking to people, you know, we're very thankful yeah. that we're at a point where people are reaching out to us or people are vouching for us. I know Mickey, Gail and Dreamer had a lot to do with us being able to come back. I know that they were pushing for us and that means the absolute world to us like that's <laughs> that's freaking awesome but also like you have yeah. to you ha if we weren't putting ourselves out there they wouldn't know that we we're mm -hmm. taking bookings they wouldn't know that we were interested in coming back or anything like that so you do right. have to still put some you know you gotta you gotta put a little bit of work into yeah oh my god you could do all the manifestation yeah. you want you the the power of spoken word is yes. true and you have to believe like the whole fake it till you make it like everything that's meant for you yeah. will be for you but you still gotta annoy the right Correct. people and get your ass in there because there's a lot of annoying people manifesting yes. in the world yes listen <laughs> we're all we're all doing it so you know we're all that's doing it we'll get degree so we're out here <laughs> so tell me you've touched on it so i know sounds like you believe in manifesting tell me about your other spiritual beliefs because i feel um, like covid was one of those moments that like you know really got people doing the inner yeah, work yeah i man there's so much like there's like so much to touch on because i don't i grew up in a very religious home i grew up in a very catholic home i respect it and i'm thankful for my grandmother for everything she did for me and you know instilling beliefs in me and there's i i would say mm -hmm. that i'm a very a spiritual person i guess i don't yeah. i don't go to church i don't i don't go to i don't you know attend mass or anything like that anymore but i just have a lot of i don't know i just i guess i just believe in like trying to be a good person your higher yeah, self sort of thing. just trying to be a good person and you know i pray and i when i'm getting ready to wrestle i pray to 
somebody to take care of me and take care yep. of my you know my opponents and and help us you know get through get through these matches safely and things like that and I don't know I I think my my religious beliefs or my spiritual beliefs change a lot mm-hmm. just depending on on my life situations and I you know uh yeah I guess it just kind of depends but I definitely do believe a lot in like I try to like meditate. Meditation has been hard say. for me the last few months, but I at least like doing affirmations in the morning and just like trying to oh, start good. my day. Yeah, like if I if I'm not giving myself the time to meditate, I'm at least trying to like get some affirmations and maybe like sometimes if I'm having a rough day, just like getting a mantra in my head of being like mm-hmm. things are going to be okay. And if something starts to go yeah. wrong, just telling myself things are going to be okay. Things are going to be okay and yep. then like just focusing on that and I I have seen a complete shift in my life from like when I was younger and I was like you know a little depressed angry child and and I just just seeing how my life when I changed my like thought process how much my life changed Mm -hmm. and so that's something that I try to like tell people when we all go through rough patches man we all go through really rough stuff and we go through we go through things that like will feel better it's just not gonna you know, it's not going to change, but I definitely do feel like I let myself be sad. If I need to cry, I cry. Everybody, like, my family knows Good. it about me. I am a crybaby. I, AK is the tough one. AK is like, if she was here right now, <laughs> she'd not be a talking cry about baby. it. Oh, I, oh, I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a self, like, self-proclaimed <laughs> crybaby. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that because I would rather okay. just, like, feel something, get it out, and be like, yeah. all right. Moving on to the next thing than just being like, no, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, and then blowing up at the wrong time. So, yeah, okay, so that, that's kind of how I see it. I'm like, I'm going to cry, and I'm going to get over it, and then it's going to be fine. And then we're <laughs> going to move on, you know, and whatever. So I, I do think, like, my life definitely changed a lot when I started to kind of just, like, just focus on the positive things. Let yeah, go. just focus on the things. Yeah. Focus on what I can't control. Like, is this going to affect my life? No. It, like, is this minor inconvenience going to affect my life forever? No, then whatever like it's not worth getting upset over or getting like mad about so did a lot of growing in the last few like the last like five to six years i would say yeah Yeah. i feel that every night i go to bed now i i hear people that do like they they say gratitude before bed for me it's turned into you know i let go of everything that doesn't serve me like because every day you're gonna have shit big shit little shit good shit bad shit but if you can really make peace with yourself and you're mostly happy and you have your health but you just keep trying to break those patterns of things that have you know let you down in the past it's like yeah just i'm i'm letting go i release all those things that don't serve me sometimes i'll be sitting in the car and i'll be like all right five things that i'm thankful for today and then like maybe like five things that i'm thankful for about myself or that i like about myself because sometimes it's hard it's you don't have to you don't have to like yourself every day, but you do have to love yourself every day. So I'm like, all right, this is the five things every I day. like. And then sometimes I will do these are five things that I, I'm working to change about my life, my situation, yep. whatever the heck may be. And literally sometimes I'm like, My car is nice, but I want a new car. Or like, you know, this car is reliable, but I want a better car. Like just like even sometimes as simple mm-hmm. as and like small as that, but it's just something that's putting it in my head that I'm like you need to start looking yep. for a new car. Your car your car is good. I have a I have a Honda Civic and I love it and it's reliable. And I'm like, you know what yep. though? I want another Honda Civic. So I'm gonna start looking for a Honda Civic. And just like little things like that, just to get into my head of being like, Yeah, this is what I have now. Nothing wrong with what I have, but this is what I would like to have. And so just kind of like I don't know, just just putting it out into the I universe. love that. And even changing the language a little more. I'm getting a new car. I'm getting a new car. And sometimes and sometimes I do say that. Like I'll be like Good. Not like, oh, I want a new car. Like, no, no, no. By the I'm end of this year, car. I'm going to have a new car. Yeah. Just like simple things yeah. like that. So when you see me, you know, post it up on Instagram with my new <laughs> car, you know it worked. Hell yeah. But get real specific. Yes. Get specific. Oh, yes. Like, I want my... I want a whatever, a black I friend. want my black 2000... <laughs> what year is this? 23? Tw- my 2023 <laughs> Honda Civic LX. I don't even know what LX means, but that's what I want. So it, I'm putting it, it out to the universe. Chic as- I want it. You're getting it. I feel it. It's happened. It's on the way. It's happening. (laughs) You know, I always go back to Dewdrop because she's done incredibly well. She's a really unconventional character for WWE. She's an unconventional build. All all of the things are very unconventional. And she's one of my favorite human beings. She's amazing. She's amazing. But she really, really did the mindset work. She woke up 
every day she was in developmental and she said, I'm going to snack. I'm going to SmackDown. I'm going to SmackDown. And literally two weeks after she started saying that to herself and fully meaning it and fully believing it, believing it, she got called up to TV. And I think a lot of times, too, when you do that, it, it sets a goal for you. Yeah. It sets a goal and you continue to work towards that goal. And so like maybe and maybe it was something subtle where she was like, I'm going to go to SmackDown. And then all of a sudden she was working a little bit harder at training and people were seeing that or yep. like it can just be the littlest thing. But man, whatever works to motivate you. Like I remember totally. I have a friend who used to write little post-it notes with things around the house like uh, he has a daughter. So he would write things about him and his daughter, things that he wanted for them. And if yeah. that's what works for you, then hell yeah, man. If it is like sitting in silence for 20 minutes a day and that's what works for you you got to find what works for you this yeah. is not a one size fits all like i was up for this really really cool project and it was going to be last last may of this past may may 2022 mm-hmm. i think it was when we were going to start shooting it and i was so excited about it i did i auditioned for it no it was november i was going to shoot in november i mm-hmm. auditioned for it like it seemed like i was getting it i was really excited about it and then something about it just felt i don't know there was just something about it that i just wasn't like crazy about i don't know there was just something that felt weird about it and so i remember like we were supposed to find out like by the end of the week if we got the project or not and i remember like literally one day just like sitting down and just thinking about it and just being like you know what i'm like my my mind is set on this and i want this and i want this and i want this but if this isn't meant for me like it's just not gonna happen and i kind of became okay with that and then a bunch of stuff happened at home when I would have been gone, that if I would have mm. not been here for that, I would have been very crushed. And Got so, it. like, I'm like, everything happens for a reason, and that project was not for me. There's a bigger one coming, and I just something changed in you, and you yeah. were like, no, something's not right. You got, yeah. you have to listen to those gut feelings. That's the universe being like, listen. <laughs> I feel like that's something that we, like, AK and I talked a lot about, is mm-hmm. like during quarantine when you know we were stuck in our houses there was we felt like we were a lot more in tune with Mm -hmm. like things that were going to happen or just or just ideas that we had that came to fruition and i think it was because there was not as much noise Mm. you weren't go 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 we weren't working you know seven days a week we weren't yeah it we took we stripped ourselves of a lot like we lost a lot and i know some people lost a lot more than others whether it be jobs whether it be loved ones opportunities whatever it was but we stripped ourselves so much that i think a lot of our growth probably happened during that time because we were actually listening to ourselves we were actually like we slowed down enough to be like oh like i remember uh you know i gained all the quarantine weight i was drinking beer every single day like i was Mm -hmm. loving life and then (laughs) in like july or like June, I remember telling AK, I was like, oh, fuck, man, I feel like something big is coming. I feel like something's about to happen. And I feel like I need to start getting like, I need to start like getting in shape. I need to start like focusing again. And so I hit up one of my friends who's uh, a fitness coach and he like helped me put together a meal plan, helped me put together a workout plan, busted my ass all of July, like killed it. Like I felt amazing. And you then look in great. August, thanks. And then in August, I got hit up. Um, I had been on this reality show and it was we're talking about august 2020 so like in my mind i'm not like that show is like the furthest thing from my mind because i'm like they're not gonna like they have such strict protocols with like what's going on like that they're shooting like they're not gonna just call us randomly right sure enough we got called in for the show and it was just like and i felt ready like i was literally just looking at pictures from it today and being like oh shit I was actually in really good shape for this like yeah. and I was also mentally ready for it because I had said to myself I'm like something is coming let me get ready and so like mm-hmm. I'm really glad that I listened to myself because I don't always listen to myself so that also is a <laughs> reminder of like listen to yourself like listen to that inner voice there is something really important about the connection between putting effort into your like physical appearance and how it makes you feel internally and I don't even mean that from like a vanity Mm -hmm. standpoint like I don't I mean like the little things like my grandma is 94 and she is independent living homegirl still gets her hair set one once a week she puts her makeup on every day she does her nails but like she's healthy like she does her mall walking because especially in my line of work I see a lot of people who don't age well because of their life life situations and i just i think that will to thrive and i mean like 
it connects so much with what you want to do with your future. And, you know, you attract abundance, you attract your career, you attract love through this inward beauty radiating outwards. And it starts with you literally just being like, you know, I'm going to brush my hair today. I brush my teeth. I wash my face. I look good. I feel good. Yes, and ready. like, I'm ready. And there's so much to be said about you putting in the work, putting in the effort, and it your mind just went somewhere else. You were literally yeah. attracting. Oh, yeah what you were putting into it like that is it in a nutshell yeah and that's that's just a good reminder of like like just listen to yourself and and this goes for like so many things in life like if you're somewhere and you don't have a good feeling about it about that place or you don't have a good feeling about the situation or you have questions or person or person yeah like (laughs) listen to yourself or like yeah or ask questions if maybe maybe this maybe maybe you're feeling weird because something's not clear ask questions like I feel like that's something too that as you get older you feel more comfortable speaking up you feel more comfortable asking questions you feel more comfortable being yeah. like no this doesn't feel right and there's so many things that I look back on in my life that I'm like man I wish I would have spoken up or I wish that I would have been like actually I don't like that or mm, this doesn't fit this doesn't feel good and like not been in that situation but you live mm-hmm. and you learn and that's really all that's yeah. all we can do. Well, I feel like we've had a fabulously prolific conversation. We we what other life issues? Do I know. I'm like, what what else can we talk about? Like, this is yeah, this is very very deep. This is feels, but this is, I honestly this is good. I keep forgetting that this is like an interview that's being recorded. Because <laughs> I feel like I'm just like I'm just like all right, girl. So let's 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 gap. Like, what's up? Like, it definitely feels very just like two girlfriends talking. Good. So and and this is our first time talking yes, ever, and obviously crazy. we love each yes, other love because it. this is this is the wrestling yes. family. Yes. But this is this is the whole point of me doing this podcast because you know we of course we're bonded by wrestling and we touch on wrestling, but this is so much more about people getting to know the intimate side yeah. of. The person behind the wrestler and i feel like i love that i can bring that out of my my sisters because like it is just like a shoot in the shit in the locker room yeah. i don't want it to be any different yeah this is like this, a candid this isn't a who trained you uh what was your oh. first match like something you said just reminded me this social media is a highlight reel we are posting our best moments we're pa- we're posting mm-hmm. for me to post that one picture there were probably 50 pictures taken I'm not snapping a picture and posting it on social media. Like, this is not 2008. Like, we don't do that anymore. You know what I mean? Like, this is not happening. From a 90 yeah, degree we're angle. Yeah, like, from, like, down here, like, the grandpa angle. No, no, no. We're not doing that. So, like, just keep that in mind because I think that there yeah. are times when, like... So, I mean, if people who've been following me know, like, I lost my dad not that long ago. And so, like... Sorry, love. Thank you. So, grief, like, sucks. Grief is very, very hard to deal with. And, like... Yeah. It comes out of nowhere, and I think that there are times that people maybe see my social media, and they're probably like, "She's just out there having fun," but like, it is a highlight reel. Like, we are not posting the moments of crying in the car. We're not posting the moments of crying at the jeweler shop because I'm getting my dad's watch fix. Like, we're not posting all of that, you know? Like, yeah. Also, like, keep that in mind. And I think we talk about social media all the time and how like social media has its place because it it can be so amazing and it can bring people together and it showcases your work or whatever but it also does bring a nasty side out sometimes and i think people just always need to remember like you are seeing what we want you to see and like you're not seeing those moments Mm -hmm. take everything you see at face value you've reminded me of a tiktok i saw the other day and it really drives home what you just said in a really over the top way there's this beautiful influencer i don't even know what she does but like she's just like she looks the business yeah chef's kiss and she's like you know what a lot of you girls are like I want to be you you look amazing you have abs she's like also I'm an IBS girl I drove my son to school today and I shit my pants I shit my pants yeah. she's like you don't see that on yeah. social media and I, this this yeah. is it it's we choose yes. what we put out there yeah. we are literally constructing you're curating a character yeah. you're yeah you're it's curating. literally we are curating i love that word yeah we are i love yes. that word yes. Yes. it so, sounds very fancy mm. like we are, we're curating <laughs> i'm curating my feed and but you really are like i feel like i am you pretty are. much an open book and i think that i am very like I am pretty open and I, I, I make friends very easily and I talk to everybody all the time. Yep. But there are things about, <laughs> you know, about ourselves that we do keep we do keep a little bit more hidden. And I think that people always need yes. to remember that. And that that also comes back into like, don't just check on your friends that are sad. Check on your happy friends, too, because people that oh, seem girl. like they're so happy on social media, maybe are not. Or check on the friend that's mm-hmm. always checking on somebody. You know what I mean? Like, mm, we got to keep that in mind. That's powerful. We got to keep that in mind, too, because... 
it's not always like you know depression can look very differently grief can look very differently it's not necessarily somebody sitting in a corner crying it can be somebody living their best life and appearing to be living their best life like some of my my worst moments i probably outwardly looked like i was loving life and so like Uh, also keep that in mind too like and you have a good support I system. I know I that. Know. But no, I'm always here. Thank like, you. Same. The, Same. Just, you can, I'm always here. Same. But let's fucking <laughs> wrap this up. Do my top 10 tailor-made questions. We're going to end on let's a fucking happy yes. note. Okay. <laughs> I'm going straight for the, oh God. straight into a dark joke. Oh God. <laughs> have you thought about this? What is your funeral song? Um. Ooh, I don't know. I don't think I've ever thought about this. Well, it depends. It depends. It depends when I die. Okay. <laughs> it depends oh. when I die. Oh, so it, so you want like a like a current? No, hit. not necessarily. Is that what we're but saying? like, you know, if I'm married with children, or whatever, my husband better play like brown eyed girl or something. Be, I don't know. It's not gonna be WAP. I don't know. Like, no, it's not gonna be like WAP. It's not gonna be no Cardi B. Sorry, Cardi, but no, it's not gonna be like Cardi. But um, I actually do want like. I don't really want a sad funeral. I want a celebration of life. I don't want people fucking crying mm-hmm. over me. Like, I mean, yes, cry for me, of course, because you're going to miss me. But, it, well, I mean, like, yes, <clears throat> obviously, cry for me. But I also want it to be a celebration. I want it to be more of a celebration of life. So, like, I don't know. Fucking of put course. some Britney on. <laughs> there we go. There we go. There, there we, we go. go. On. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, we didn't even touch oh, on astrology, which is, I always like to touch on it, but that's okay. So I know you are a uh, Leo with a Gemini moon, which go am ahead. I? I don't know. Is mm-hmm. that what I am? So, yeah. So it's your moon sign is where the moon yeah. was the day just, you were I born. I keep forgetting to and, check. Like I, I literally keep yeah, forgetting I, to check. I like anyone I'm going to talk to. I'm like, I need to know what your moon oh. is. <laughs> Your moon is how you show up in intimate relationships, whether that's with your family, your friends, huh. your partner. Yeah. So actually, I always think your moon sign is way Closer more important your... because, yeah, yeah cuz Leo is how you present to the yeah. masses. That's kind of like not a mask, but it kind of is. But like the combination between Leo and Gemini makes you like a determined performer with well-defined and realistic thoughts. And I'm just going to read this straight from the charts. Naturally, Leo personality is lively, vivacious, loving, passionate, big hearted and commanding. Whereas Gemini is sharp, smart, smart, quick, shrewd, adaptable and adjustable. So it's, uh, wow. you know, just a little, little combo there, a little fierce I like combo. That. I also feel like you perfectly described me, but whatever. Right? You need, you <laughs> just Google. I keep for, I literally Leo keep son. about it. I'm like, I need to get my birth certificate <laughs> out because I always forget if I was born at 115 or 145. It should be closer to like the minute if you can, but I feel like within okay. that time frame, you'd still get a really accurate rising okay. sign. But you should yeah, you should definitely look to. into it because it's you're gonna know so much more okay. about your personality. Do you know what your partner is? January you, January Capricorn. Oh, January. Yes, oh yeah, Capricorn, he's a Capricorn. Yes. So my question was: Do you tend to date the same sign? Or are you completely blissfully unaware of it? I've dated a lot of um, Cancers and Arieses. You like crybabies. <laughs> it's just not a good mix. I'm a crybaby, so we like, don't. No, but a, um, a lot of yeah, a lot of Julys and a lot of um, like March. If you're cognizant of it, you date the same. Yeah signs which for yeah. me is Leo and Taurus, and I'm a double Leo, like a Moon Ooh. and Rising. With an Aquarius sun, so there's a lot of like, look at me, look at me, love me. Okay, don't love me. Ew. Ew. <laughs> yeah. Go away. Yeah. Um, what is your secret supernatural power? I don't know if this is a superpower, but maybe it kind of is. I really do feel like I can talk to anybody. I can find a way to like relate or at least like have some sort of conversation that's like entertaining, I like to think. Not everybody can do yeah. that. So that's my, that's, yes. that's my superpower that I'm willing to Super share. Power. We love it. Okay, fair. And then we're going to we'll circle, circle back, back later. Yeah. And I want to find out yes. the actual supernatural. <laughs> do you believe in ghosts? And if so, do you have a ghost story? Yes. 
I think it was like 2019 and AK and I decided to stay in Atlanta. We were down there for NWA. We decided to stay for a few extra days. So we had the Airbnb until the next day. And then we're like, this is something that you uh, people will learn about Allison and I. We are either like super on it. We're like planning and we're like, all right, this is it. Or we're literally like, we'll figure it out. And both of us are the same way. Yeah. So it's perfect. Like we okay. literally are just like, as long as we're together, we know we'll figure it out. So, like, we have right. literally gone to a different country, not knowing where we were going to stay, and just figured it out. <laughs> I love yes, that. This is, this is, this is not, nothing new for us. So, we're in Atlanta. <laughs> we went out to eat, and then we're like, oh, we should find, like, somewhere to stay. And we're looking at hotels, and hotels are kind of expensive, very randomly. But we're like, oh, well, let's try Airbnb. We end up staying yep. at this one Airbnb, and we're like, oh, okay, cool, whatever. We know nothing about Atlanta. We show yep. up, and it's like, it seems like a pretty nice place. But it just feels okay. weird. It just feels <sighs> weird. And then there's, like, a door to the basement with a padlock on it. And we're not allowed to go down there. Um, everything was very bare. And so there, it was two rooms, two bedrooms, two baths. We go into our own rooms and, like, it almost looked like somebody had moved out in a rush. It was, like, very bare. It was literally, like, here's a bed, here's a dresser. But there were, like, scuff marks all over the walls. It was very oh. weird. And so we're, like, okay. Like, we went even, like, we even went downstairs to the kitchen. There's, like, no utensils. There's not even a fork. Just very, very oh. odd. Very, very weird. But whatever. We both go to sleep. We both have night terrors. And we both have nightmares. Oh, I forgot at one point, very randomly in the middle of the night, a bird smashed into AK's window. Oh, God. Just weird. Weird. But whatever. That is weird. Especially at night. Yes. But whatever. The next day we wake mm. up and I'm like, I have very vivid dreams. And I remember usually most of my dreams. Like I wake, I dream every single night. And I wake up usually remembering them. And so I'm like, man... But whatever, I always, I literally wake up and I'm like, hey, AK, let me tell you my dream. And so I'm telling her my dream and I was like, man, yeah, man, I was like, I was like sleeping and I swear to you, like I woke up and there were these like little kids, like little, almost like little gremlins. And they were like pushing on the bed and I literally felt them like on me and they would like disappear into the walls, which is very weird. And she's like, I had a really fucking weird nightmare too. She said she felt like she was 100% awake. She looked over and on the counter in the bathroom was like a lady sitting there like dripping blood. Oh no. Just fucking weird. And so whatever, we come home and we're we're like we're you know, we both have Patreon, so we're sharing our stories with our with our with our patrons or whatever. And one of my patrons hits me up and she's like, Hey, I'm from Atlanta, like where did you stay? And I tell her and she's like, Oh, that area is literally known as like murder row. So like something probably happened in that house. And both Holy of us a hundred percent felt it. It was so weird it was so so weird so thick yeah, it just like you just it just knew did it. not feel good that house just did not feel good but yes so that is one mm. of our that is one of our ghost stories love it and that's a supernatural yes. power too to like know to feel that like, you know yeah, yeah yes. you know Oof, yeah good one okay change in mood rite of passage for a woman Ooh. and a man sometimes nip slip incontinence lip slip or pooping in the ring. Have you done any of the above? I think the closest was maybe a snip slip. Maybe. Okay. Um, just when I first started wrestling. No peeing on no, a drop kick? No, I don't drop kick. <laughs> ha! I don't drop oh, kick. There we go. I don't drop kick. Solved. So, Solved. So that's, really, that's the real reason. It's not because I can't jump. I don't drop because I want to pee my pants. <laughs> no. Like, knock Be on smart. wood, man. Knock on wood. I feel like it's been close. It's been close. There have been times where, it's good. where I've been like, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. But um, no, I think probably the closest was probably like a nip slip. Um, that was probably okay. the closest. And it was like r when I first started, I just didn't understand how, like the bra situation. <laughs> Wardrobe. Yeah. I just didn't, it was literally <laughs> within my first year. I just didn't understand the, the bra situation. And so I think it, it ended That's up being fair. just the bra. But it was enough good. to be like, okay, so one straps do not work. <laughs> Got it. Yes. And all the and tape. tape. All yes, the tape. Yes. <laughs> what is your professional wrestling pet peeve i don't get bothered by a lot of things i'm just like that's dumb <laughs> like it's a good yeah. way to be though keep you healthy yeah. keep you healthy who is your favorite band or artist me and ak i feel like everything always goes back to me and ak i think people okay. will be very very surprised to know like what our music tastes are like um mm -hmm. like based on our appearances i feel like people probably have some sort of idea and yes i love latin music like I'm a reggaeton like 
I fell in love with reggaeton when I was like 12 years old. I fell in love with that music when I should not have been listening to it. And that's still like the only music that of I course. still follow. But actually, I was like a new metal kid. And so <gasps> I am like... So we have music. Um, it's by a band called the Dropout Kings. And they're a new metal band. They're okay. like a, a recent new metal band. Um, they're freaking incredible. They're amazing. I love them so much. And I love that they've allowed me to use this music I used it in Ring of Honor, I used it on the Indies, and now I get to use it um, here at Impact. So it's been awesome. And they're a new metal band. They're awesome. Me and AK are actually going to go see them uh, again in May because they're touring with another one of my old favorite bands, which was a band called El Nino. So they're touring oh, yeah, wow. so they're touring with them. And like I've known the guys from El Nino since I was a child. So I'm really excited for that. <laughs> and then actually last week I just went to see another one of my favorite bands. It's a, a pop punk band called I Am The Avalanche. And they okay. are incredible. And I just got to see them last week with Bayside. But I, w- I was there oh, for cool. I Am The Avalanche. Like, Bayside was awesome. And it was the first time I had seen Bayside. So it was really fun. But I was definitely there yeah. for I Am The Avalanche. And I like my little... Their album, their first album was called I Am The Avalanche. I discovered their album back in 2008. And it was um, when I had my mm-hmm. first ever apartment. And when I just got into wrestling. And so like oh, that wow. album... like hold so many memories for me and we're kindred souls girl new metal was my first love new metal has never done i am so bummed well i'm not bummed because if i'm gonna miss it (laughs) for a good a good cause um i'm going to a friend's wedding but that night there is a new metal night you know how they do emo nights they're doing a new metal night here in cincinnati Mm. and so i don't know we were talking about it we're like we can just go after the wedding like i will show up and like my dress (laughs) and my adidas like do not play do not play with me like i have my jonathan davis's adidas upstairs i will show i will wear them to the wedding if i have to like i it's but that's we're we're, we're undecided it's at the end of the month so we're kind of going to play it by ear but i feel like you'd be ready to show up though after a wedding like oh oh yes it might be i have to to wrestle the next day so i kind of have to like (laughs) i have to pull it back but I don't know. That might be worth like staying up for. It might be. We'll see. Like that's coming we'll from see. a girl who won't go out, but like I would go out for that. I would go to a new yes. metal night. Look it up, man. Maybe they, maybe they have them. They do. I know they do. And I, I'm just gonna. Well, you know what? I'm gonna look it up because that's well worth. Yes. My girlfriends would love yes. that. All my that girlfriends is worth would love a that. Night out. That is worth. We had this thing in um, at NWA that we always did was. Like the night, the night before our final day, the girls would all go out. Oh. And so at first it was like like four of us, and then like the last time that we went out, it was like seven or eight of us, and we're talking about like we literally go out, we go out to like downtown Nashville. Oh. We have, we have two to three drinks at most, and we're talking about <laughs> seltzers. Like no one's slamming whiskey. We're literally having like seltzers, till like one in the morning uh-huh. or like two, like two, because we get done with tapings like at eleven. So we literally go out for like two hours. We grab food from the food truck <laughs> and we're back to work in the morning. And like, and it's amazing. And like, that's it, every once in a while, you do gotta like, you gotta go out every once in a you while. You do have to go out because it, it is fun. Once you get out, yes. you're good. Yes. It's just the exactly. getting out yes. that's that can yes. be hard. <laughs> yes. Leaving the house is hard. Leaving the house yes. is once hard. Once you're out, it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> okay, name a movie that's changed your life. There is a movie, it's a Mexican movie called Itu Mama Tambien. Literally translates to like and your mother too. Aww. It's Gaga El Garcia Bernal and Diego Luna, and um, that movie changed my life Aww. because I was way too young to be watching it. <laughs> way too young to be watching it. Do not watch this if your child is around. <laughs> if you decide to watch this, we do not watch it when your child is around. Um, <laughs> but my sister and I were just talking about this the other day, and I feel like I love that movie because I feel like it bonded me to my sisters. Mm-hmm. Because I could not tell my parents that we watched it. So I feel like it definitely bonded us. So I definitely have like a very romantic, like emotional connection to it. You know what movie I just saw? What? This Halloween that I had never seen? What? Silence of the Lamb. <gasps> Great movie. And that, I was like, like it was such a good fucking movie <laughs> that I was so mad at myself for not having seen it Fair. 15 years ago. Fair. But that's another one. And then Dirty Dancing. <gasps> Dirty Dancing. I don't know why. I don't know. It's a good I'm one. talking about like, yeah, I don't know why, but I just, it's a movie that I can watch time and time and time. And oh, time hell and time yeah. Again. And just, I love oh. Dirty Dancing. I do love Dirty yes. Dancing. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. I would say the movies changed my life. Sure. Perfect. Who has been your most <laughs> embarrassing crush? 
No, I feel like this one isn't really embarrassing, but like I've always loved Paul Rudd. I feel like <sighs> everybody loves Paul Rudd though. That's not embarrassing. No, like he, everybody loves Paul Rudd. He's ageless. We love Paul Rudd. Oh, I oh, this is actually this is weird. I, <laughs> I should have I should say it. No, now you have to. <laughs> I used to have a crush on Wolverine when I was like nine, but I'm not talking about like the actor. No, I'm no, talking no. about like. <laughs> Wolverine. This, that's that's embarrassing. This, that's, this is becoming a thing on my show. <laughs> because yeah, I was like nine. But yeah, I definitely had like a crush on. It doesn't matter. It's this, so good. Harley Cameron had a crush, ha- had has a crush on Brock from okay, Pokemon. I could see that. Pink hair, she was just at the tapings. Alex Gracia. Thank you. The the heartthrob from Little Mermaid, Eric? The, the the prince. <laughs> Eric, thank you. you she had a crush though? on I Eric. I had a huge crush on Beast, but not not when he became a person on Beast. I think I had a on crush Beast. on the Beast. Yeah, yeah I'm because I, I, I as the girls are like rolling out these like cartoon crushes, I'm like, I think yeah. I had the Beast. Like when he was still the a Beast, beast which like child yes. childhood Once trauma. Again, yes. <laughs> Okay, where can our listeners find you on the interwebs? Where yes, Patreon, so I tell have us all the Patreon, things. OnlyFans, and I'm most active on Instagram, um, MartyBell.com, M-A-R-T-I-B-E-L-L-E.com for merch. And from there, you can kind of see all my other social medias and all of that. I try to post like every day on on some form of social media. Even if I'm not posting at the moment, it's uh, scheduled. But yeah. um yeah, those are probably the best places. Um, MartyBell.com has my merch and has all my information. And then from there, you can go on my OnlyFans, go on my Patreon. Patreon has a lot more of, like, the wrestling stuff. We do a lot of, like, behind the scenes, a lot of, like, vlogs and stuff like that. Okay. So um, if you're more interested in, like, the wrestling aspect, I would definitely go to uh, Patreon. If you're looking for a little bit more cuteness, I would go on OnlyFans. <laughs> Okay, last one. Finish this lyric. This is for your new metal soul. Something takes a part of me. You and I were meant to be. Meant to be. Yes, girl. For me to yeah. For me to lay. Yes. Yes. Well, I feel like Marty Bell and I solved a lot of first world problems, introspective issues. We talked about Britney, talked about real feelings, talked about wrestling. We actually talked about wrestling a lot. I feel like we talked about more wrestling than I talk about typically. So that's a win. Really, you know, keeping things varied because that is what you get from Wild On. But it is still very much a candid conversation between myself and my sisters and my brothers. And for those of you who don't know, I'm a sober witch. And when I want to have a beverage during my interviews, I go for partake. They have IPAs, they have stouts, they have pale ale, they have so many things. And the best part is, because I'm a bit of a vain witch, they're only 10 to 15 calories. This one's only 10 calories and it's delicious. Never have I ever wanted a beer and substituted it with a non-alcoholic beverage and been disappointed by Partake. 10 out of 10, I would recommend. And speaking of recommending, I cannot recommend my Wild On badass punk rock girl band team who allows me to do this podcast every week. I seriously couldn't do it without my team. My producer, my editor, my queen, the woman who writes me a million notes that I filter through my not quite neurodivergent, not quite typical brain. She's on the same wavelength. We get the things done. You love the product. I hope you love the product. Editor and producer, Rochelle Duras, our girl that does all the social media things. She teaches us stuff that we don't understand. Marketing specialist, Madison Golshani. I love you, ladies. Happy Women's Day. This is going to be released after Women's Day, but I'm still saying it because it's March 8th, 2023. And until next week, keep calm and wild on. Blessed be. Blessed be.